all of the phrasal verbs in today's lesson are really common and you will hear them being used day to day. I hope today's lesson inspires you to use more phrasal verbs in your day-to-day -day life. Here's the challenge. Every day, choose two, two new phrasal verbs from today's lesson to learn. Use the timestamps down below to help you choose the phrasal verbs you want to learn and to get through this list. Can you write me two example sentences in the comments every day? Or just write your example sentences in a notebook. But do everything you can to learn the phrasal verbs in this lesson. A hundred phrasal verbs, that's a lot. Now, I don't want you to freak out. Freak out, let's start with that one. Definition, you become extremely emotional very quickly. We have our normal emotional state and then we can freak out. What's that little S there? I'll explain that in about a minute. Don't worry, you don't need to know what that is yet. Freak out can be positive, like with happiness. I freaked out when I got the job offer. Freak out can be negative, like with anger. I don't know why the customer started freaking out. Her food was on time. Freak out can also be negative in terms of fear. Okay, can you move that doll? It's, um, it's freaking me out a little bit. With this last one here, fear, we can also say creep out. Same thing. Oh, spiders really creep me out. So when I say I don't want today's lesson to freak you out, I'm talking about fear. Please don't freak out. <laughs> oh, I'm not freaking out. Are you freaking out? No, I'm just very interested. I don't want this lesson to scare you because 100 is a big number. Two new phrasal verbs every day. That's enough. My name is Arnell. Let's keep going. Part one, 30 phrasal verbs you can use every day. Before we start, there are a couple things you need to remember. One, some phrasal verbs need an object. If a phrasal verb needs an object, I'll underline it for you. Some phrasal verbs are separable. Again, if a phrasal verb is separable, I'll let you know. Actually, I'll put a little S next to the phrasal verb so you know you can separate that phrasal verb. And some phrasal verbs don't even need an object. I usually wake up at six. Today, I woke up at 6.30. Wake up, woke up, woken up. Remember, you need to change that verb form depending on the tense. I woke up at 6.30, but I got up at 6.45. Definitions. Wake up. Stop sleeping. You wake up. Get up out of bed. On Saturday, I didn't get up until 11. Yes, usually we can use these interchangeably. What time are you getting up tomorrow? Here it's clear I mean, what time are you waking up tomorrow? <sighs> I'm awake. I turned on my phone. I turned on my lamp. I turned on the heater. I turned off the notifications. I turned off my lamp. I turned off the heater. I opened my phone. I closed my lamp. Remember, use turn on and turn off for electronics. 
I have an interview at 10. Interviews stress me out. Definition. Make me stressed. Paying bills stresses me out. Stress me out. Stress me out. Me is a pronoun, right? If your phrasal verb is separable, like stress out, you can see my S, the pronoun must go in the middle. Let's look at a few examples. In these four sentences, you can see only the first three are correct. The object can go in the middle after the phrasal verb, or the pronoun can go in the middle. Grammar tip to remember. Never put a pronoun after your phrasal verb. Let me know in the comments, what's something that stresses you out? Why do interviews stress me out? I don't like the questions. I'm not good at coming up with answers. I need to come up with a couple of ideas before 10. Can you help me come up with something? Come up with something. Definition. To think of something to say or you think of an idea. Whoever came up with the cronut is a genius. Cronut. Croissant plus donut. Cronut. Okay. At the interview, I hope they don't bring up my internship. It was a really bad experience. Definition. To start speaking about a topic. Don't bring up John's divorce, okay? Don't start speaking about it. I was talking to my grandpa the other day, and he brought up the war. I was really surprised because he'd never spoken about it to me before. Okay. I think you can tell I'm a little bit nervous about this interview. Mm. I don't know how many people are going to be interviewed, but I hope I stand out. I hope I stand out. Definition. To be noticeable because you are different or more impressive. If 10 people are being interviewed, you want to stand out, right? Look at this picture. Which umbrella stands out? The red one stands out. Right, right, right. For the interview, I need to look up the location, I need to look up the bus times, and I need to look up... I should probably look up the weather. Definition. To search and find specific information. How do we look things up? We normally use Google, right? If you don't know a word in English, look it up. Hmm. No buses go to my interview place. I need to figure out how to get there. I also need to figure out what to wear. Figure out. To think and find a solution. How? What? When? Where? Who? We often say figure out plus question word because we're trying to find an answer to a question. You know, I still can't figure out why my computer is so slow. Okay, I can't eat breakfast at home because I've run out of cereal. I'm also running out of time. Run out of something. Definition. You used everything, but you still need more. Look at my examples. I've run out of cereal. I need more. I need breakfast. I'm running out of time. I need more time. I might run out of money before the end of the month. So, I've run out of cereal, but that's okay. On my way to the interview, I'll pop into a coffee shop and pick up some breakfast. Definition. Pop into plus location. You enter a place for a short time. Am I going to go in, sit down, have a coffee, and enjoy myself? No, I'm just popping in. I'm going to pop into my husband's office and say, Hello. Pick up breakfast. Definition. Collect. I'll pick up breakfast. 
I picked up my kids from school. Can you please pick up some milk on the way home? What's the opposite? Drop off. I dropped off my kids at school. I dropped off my suit at the dry cleaners. I'll pick it up next week. So I popped into a coffee shop and picked up a cherry banana muffin. It was gross, so I threw it away. Definition: You put something in a trash can. Yesterday, I threw away an old pair of shoes. It's too bad the cherry banana muffin was no good, but I'm trying to cut back on sugar. Anyway, cut back on something. I eat this much sugar every day. I need to cut back. I drink four cups of coffee every day. That's true. I should probably cut back. Definition: Reduce. Normally, when we cut back on something, it has to do with food, drinks, or spending. Walking to work can help you cut back on gas costs. Okay, I'm on the subway now, heading to my interview. The subway is crowded. It's noisy. It's smelly. I wish I had a car so I wouldn't have to. Put up with this. Definition: If you put up with something, something is negative, like a crowded subway, but you continue to accept it. I only put up with my roommate because she pays most of the rent. I've been putting up with your lies for years. It's over. Hi, I have an interview at ten with Hannah Baker. Okay, bear with me a sec, please. Bear with plus person. Normally, we just say bear with me. Definition: Please be patient while I do something else. So here she says, "Bear with me for a sec." It's clear she needs to check my details and probably inform Hannah Baker that I'm here. Please bear with me while I check my notes. Okay, now I'm at work. I'm at my normal job, and to be honest, the interview was a disaster. I really need to calm down. Definition: to stop feeling angry, excited, or nervous. You can calm down, or you can calm someone else down. Gina was so upset this morning; it took me thirty minutes to calm her down before she told me what was wrong. Okay, I've calmed down. I need to check my emails. Hmm. Dan, 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 Dan. I should probably get back to Dan. And I have to get back to Amy. Why hasn't Louie gotten back to me yet? Definition: If you get back to someone, is you respond to them. This is normally via email, phone, or message. So, I need to get back to Dan. Let's get back to him together. Hi, Dan. Sorry for the delay in getting back to you. Yes, a paper delivery on Monday would be perfect. I look forward to seeing you next week, Arnell. Smiley face. Look forward to plus noun or verb ing. Gerund. Definition. I'm excited about something in the future. Every day, I look forward to watching Netflix in the evening. I'm looking forward to my vacation next month. I am here. I'm supposed to be there. Remember, I was late for work because of the interview. I have to catch up on my work. 
definition. If you catch up on something, you have to work or do something quickly because you are behind. I have to catch up on my work. I have to catch up on my homework. My mom is going to watch my baby this weekend so I can catch up on some sleep. I have a lot of work to catch up on, so I'll start by filling out these spreadsheets. Definition. Fill out. To complete a form or document with information. I filled out this form wrong. I put in my details instead of my son's. You can also say fill in. You fill in a form, fill in an application. Fill out is more American English. Fill in is more British English, but they mean the same thing. I know they look like opposites, fill in, fill out, but they mean the same thing. At work, I sit next to Vicky. Vicky and I get along really well. I don't get along with Trish. I prefer not to speak to her. Definition. Get along with someone. You have a good relationship and you like each other. This can be any relationship. Friends, colleagues, um, husband, wife, any relationship. Why don't I get along with Trish? Because she's always playing her music. Every day, she turns up her music really loud. I have to tell her to turn it down. Turn down your music, please. Thank you. Definitions. Turn up, volume up. Turn down, volume down. And we only use turn up, turn down with um, music or the TV. We wouldn't use it for people. For example, you wouldn't say, I'm sorry, can you please turn up? Next to my desk, there's also a vending machine. They need to get rid of it. With a vending machine next to me, I always want to buy some chocolate. Remember I told you I'm trying to cut back on sugar? Get rid of something. Definition. To remove it. I have a lot of old clothes I want to get rid of. If we get rid of something, we can throw it away. We can sell it. Or just remove it. Right. I need to go over these spreadsheets before I submit them. Go over. Definition. Review. I went over my notes before the test. Let's go over tomorrow's plan. The spreadsheets look good. I can hand them in. I can hand them in. Definition. If you hand something in, you give it to an authority. An authority. This can be like a professor, teacher, policeman. Think about it like your hand. You hand in, like you're giving something. I found a wallet on the street, so I handed it in. In this case, it's obvious. It means I handed it in to the police. Wow! Last one! It's been a really long day, hasn't it? I'm so happy tomorrow's Saturday, so I can sleep in. Definition. To sleep longer than usual in the morning. I normally wake up at 6, but on the weekends, I can sleep in. I want to sleep in, but my baby wakes me up nice and early. Okay, we've already looked at 32 phrasal verbs. How are you feeling? When you're learning a language or when you're learning anything, it's important to take breaks. During your breaks, you can work out or maybe meet up with a friend. Work out, meet up. Work out means to exercise. Every day, I work out in the gym for half an hour. Or you can say, I hate 
working out. Meet up. You meet someone you already know to socialize. And socialize means you do something fun, like with your friends or family members. Uske and I met up on Friday for coffee. We can say, meet up, stop. We should meet up more often. Or you meet up with someone. I met up with Uske last Friday for a coffee. What's the difference between meet and meet up? Meet up is informal and we use it when we're talking about socializing. Remember, doing something fun. Meet can also be used in this way, but it's often used in different situations. For example, when you introduce yourself to someone new. I met my new neighbor. In my job, I meet new people every day. Meet can also sound really official. World leaders met to discuss climate change. So if you say, my boss and I met up on Monday, this does kind of um, give the feeling that you did something fun together. Part two. 30 more phrasal verbs you can use every day. Chapter one, the travel blogger. Okay, I'm a travel blogger. Last month, I went hiking in a rainforest. I want to show you my favorite picture. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, stop. Definition, scroll down. You go down your screen. What's the opposite? Scroll up. Scroll up. Stop. That's my favorite picture. It's a bit small, so let's zoom in. Zoom in. Zoom in. You can see the orangutan is holding a piece of fruit. Zoom in. Definition. You make an image bigger because you want to see the details. So we can zoom in and zoom out. Before I publish my blog, I need to do a few things. Let's look at my to-do list. I need to upload the pictures, write a 500 word article, and think of an eye-catching title. Eye-catching is a great adjective. It means to get someone's attention. I've already uploaded the pictures. I can check that one off. Check something off. Definition. You write a check mark next to something you've completed on a list. I've already written the 500 word article. I can check number two off. Notice the S. Okay, I still need to think of an eye-catching title. Assistant, write these ideas down. Write down. Definition, to write something short on a piece of paper. For example, your appointment is scheduled for 8 a.m. on the 3rd. Would you like me to write that down for you? No thanks, I'll just put it in my phone. We can write something down or we can jot something down. Same thing. Write these ideas down. Jot these ideas down. Okay, eye-catching title. Arnell's Rainforest Adventure. I don't like it. Cross it out. Cross something out. You put a line through something because it's a mistake or you don't like it. I accidentally wrote the wrong date. No problem. Just cross it out and write it again. Mm -hmm. Colorful pictures in a sea of green. I don't 
smell like it. Cross it up. Um, let's see. I don't know how many titles I thought of, but I started to get really frustrated. So I ripped up the list. Definition, rip up. To tear something soft into small pieces. My dog loves ripping up toilet paper. I love ripping up bread and putting it in soup. Okay, after a few hours, I ended up choosing this title for my blog. My camera, turning a rainforest into a rainbow forest. Huh? End up. End up is a complicated phrasal verb. Definition. Eventually something happens and the ending is surprising or unexpected. Do you remember Darcy Hill from high school? She ended up marrying Paul Miller. If I just said she married Paul Miller, that feeling of surprise isn't there. We couldn't find a free room in a hotel anywhere, so we ended up sleeping in our car. I know Aaron loves his motorcycle, but one day he's going to end up in the hospital. Let me know in the comments below. Do you understand how to use end up? Can you maybe give me an example sentence? Chapter two, organizing an event. I'm organizing a team building event for my company. Team building is when a company organizes an hour, a day or a weekend for employees to have fun together and become a closer team. So team building can be in an office like this or something outdoors like, like this. The good thing about team building is that everyone is working toward the same goal. Work toward. Definition. To work to achieve a goal. My cousin Winona is working toward a degree in engineering. Mini note. Toward without the S is the preferred American English spelling. Towards with that S is the preferred British English spelling. Both of these are the same and you can choose which one you want to use. They're the same. So I thought hiking would be a good team building activity. Don't worry, we're not just going to be hiking and getting dirty and muddy and sweaty. We'll be staying in a beautiful hotel. We check in on the 20th and check out on the 22nd. Check in. You arrive at a hotel on the first day and you get your key. What's the opposite? Check out. Definition. You leave the hotel on your last day and you return your key. Check in and check out are phrasal verbs, but they're often used as nouns. For example, on a hotel website, check in is at 3 p.m. and check out is at 10 a.m. Organizing an event for 20 people is not easy. I've spent weeks Juggling everyone's schedule around so nobody misses out. Juggle around and miss out. Let's start with juggle around. First, this activity here is juggling. The verb is juggle. You can see the balls moving in different directions. Imagine that, but on a schedule. Juggle around, definition to move people, dates, appointments, so everyone is involved. I'm trying to juggle around a few students so I can teach everyone before my vacation. I asked my secretary to juggle the clients around on Monday because I need to leave work an hour early. Miss out. Definition. To not be involved. I don't want anyone to miss out on this hiking trip. I work the night shift on the weekends. I always miss out on my friends' get-togethers, 
parties, and any fun weekend stuff. So we can miss out. Stop. I don't want to miss out. Or we can miss out on something. Hmm. If it rains, the plans will still go ahead. Go ahead. Definition. The plan continues even though there are challenges. Common mistake. Go ahead does not mean yeah, keep going. It isn't used to give motivation. Bill is really sick. I don't know if the negotiations will go ahead without him. I don't know if they'll continue without him. Okay, this is the best part about the weekend. The company is giving away three thousand dollars to the team that completes the hike the fastest. Giveaway definition: to give something to someone for free. But we don't use giveaway with gifts. I wouldn't say it's Sandy's birthday. I'm giving away a book. We give away things we don't want or we don't need. Hmm, where's the cute dress you sewed? Ugh, I gave it away. It didn't look good on me. So it's three thousand dollars to the winning team. If a team decides to give up, they have to work an extra Saturday. Give up definition to quit something because you are tired or you have no motivation. You'll see a picture like this online a lot. Never give up. This means. Never quit. Apart from the hiking, the employees can hang out around the hotel. Hang out. Definition: to spend time with people, doing nothing important. I think most employees will want to hang out by the pool. My friends and I hung out at a cafe for a couple of hours because it was raining. <laughs> you know. I didn't organize this whole team building event by myself. I worked with one of my colleagues, Zoe. To be honest, um, Zoe isn't the easiest person to work with. <laughs> In one of our meetings, I got so angry that I stormed out of the room. Storm out. Definition: to leave a room in an angry way, kind of like you're a storm. What did you say to me? We can say storm out. He stormed out, or he stormed out of plus the place. Chapter three: Living with your parents. This is my mom. I heard you lost your job. Yeah, the company closed, so I'm looking for a new job. Hmm, I think you should move in with us. <laughs> no, 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 no.、Um, thank you. I moved out when I was eighteen, and that's how I like it. Definition: Move out. You leave a place. You leave your home with all of your things. What's the opposite? Move in. You go to your new home with all of your things. My neighbors are moving out. I'm really gonna miss them. I hope someone nice moves in. Let's get back to the conversation with my mom. Um, thank you, mom, but I'm I'm not gonna move in with you guys. It's the best thing to do. You can save money living with us. Do you even have any money? You're always wearing the same shoes. You will never talk me into moving in with you. Talk someone into something. With this phrasal verb, it's a set structure. The person always goes in the middle. Definition: to convince someone to do something. You manage to persuade someone. I can't believe Jamie talked me into going bungee jumping. 
I can't believe she convinced me to do this. What's the opposite? Talk someone out of something. I'm trying to talk my best friend out of quitting university. <laughs> my brother lives in a tiny apartment and he wants to buy a German Shepherd. How can I talk him out of it? How can I convince him not to do this? So, I'm moving in with my parents. Why do you have so many boxes? Are these your boxes? Or your boyfriend's boxes? Um, they have one rule for me. Be home by 10 p.m. <laughs> Which is kind of ridiculous because I'm an adult. I usually sneak out when they're sleeping. Definition, sneak out. You slowly leave a place slowly and quietly so nobody sees you. What's the opposite? Sneak in. I sneak in before they wake up. The meeting had already started, so I sneaked in. It looks boring, so I sneaked out. So we can sneak out or sneak out of plus place. One thing my parents do is stock up on a lot of essentials. They stock up on toilet paper. They stock up on detergent. They stock up on flour. Definition, to collect a large supply of something so you can use it in the future. When my favorite shampoo is on sale, I like to stock up. You know, living at home isn't easy. Um, whenever I take something out of the fridge, my mom immediately tells me to put it back. Take out, definition, to remove something from its place. What's the opposite? Put back. My daughter took out the markers, but didn't put them back. So we can take something out, or we can take something out of plus place. You can't just take out a piece of chocolate, taste it, and put it back. Gross. Okay, I've been complaining a lot about my parents, especially my mom, but living at home isn't all bad. I do get to pig out on my mom's good cooking. Pig out, definition, to eat a lot in a short period of time. After picking out all Christmas, um, I decided to go on a diet. Do you like to pig out? What's your favorite pig out food? Mine is ice cream. Wow, 64 phrasal verbs done. Not bad. Anyway, last week, a friend and I met up for lunch. Remember, meet up? I was on time, but Kate showed up 30 minutes late. That's Kate, she's always late. Show up, definition, to arrive. My train showed up early. My train arrived early. So Kate and I met up for lunch. My sandwich tasted a bit weird, but I kept eating it. Eventually, I had to spit out a bite. It was gross. After I got home an hour later, I threw up. Spit out definition. You, you remove something from your mouth. Don't spit out your gum on the street. Put it in a trash can. Throw up. You empty your stomach because you feel sick. I had the flu last week and was throwing up every day. Anyway, I threw up my sandwich. A few days later, I ran into Kate. She told me that she had also thrown up that day. We are never going to that restaurant again run into someone or bump into someone. Same thing. I ran into one of my teachers at the grocery store. It was a pleasant surprise. 
you're never going to believe who I ran into. I was waiting for my train and guess who I saw? Travis. He told me that he now owns four properties. A property is a building you can buy like um, a house or an apartment. So he told me he owns four properties. I don't believe him. I think he completely made that up. Make something up. You invent, you create a story, a lie, or an excuse. I didn't want to go to Martha's wedding, so I made up an excuse about my grandma being sick. Is my grandma really sick? No, I just made that up. Sorry, grandma. <laughs> and makeup doesn't have to be negative, um, like with a lie. My five-year-old daughter and her friend made up this story about unicorns, mermaids, and fairies all living together. Part three, close phrasal verbs. Number one, put on. Every morning I put on my clothes. I put on a t-shirt. I put on jeans. I put on socks. We use put on to mean you put something on your body like clothes. You can also put on a hat, put on glasses, put on perfume. I put on clothes. I put clothes on. Both are fine. So, what's the opposite of put on? Put off. No, take off. You can take off your hat, take off your glasses, take off your t-shirt, take off your jeans, take off your socks. I want to take off my shoes. I want to take my shoes off. Fine, both are correct. Ooh, this is a nice restaurant, but I, I can't wear this. I need to dress up. I need to look nice. I need to look formal. People dress up for weddings. You can dress up for your graduation. Even though I use the word dress, I don't really mean a dress. Men also dress up. For example, a man could wear a suit to dress up. Now, dress up has two definitions. The first one is the one we've just looked at, to wear nice and formal clothes. The second definition is to wear a costume. People dress up for Halloween. Now, don't worry. Depending on the context of the situation, there won't be any confusion between these two. Psst. The teacher said we had to dress up tonight. That's right. Really? Are you dressing up? Of course. Okay. Well, normally there isn't any confusion. We have dress up. The opposite is dress down. Dress down means to wear casual clothes, more casual than usual. For example, in my company, we need to look professional. Every day I wear a, a dress suit. But one Friday a month, all employees can dress down. On that day, I wear jeans and a sweater. Number five, hang out. I like to hang out my laundry on a sunny day. I like to hang my laundry out on a sunny day. Well, what is laundry? Laundry is the noun we use to describe clothes that are dirty and need to be washed or clothes that have just been washed. So, if my laundry is wet, I need to hang out 
my laundry. Oh, don't leave your jacket on the floor. Hang up your jacket. Use a hanger and hang up your jacket. Use a hanger and hang up your shirt. Use a hanger and hang up your pants. We use hang up to mean to organize your clothes by putting them on a hanger, in the closet, or on a hook. Let's keep going. Are you ready for seven, eight, and nine? Okay. Last week I did some shopping online. Hmm. I picked out some white jeans. <laughs> I picked out a dark blue shirt, and I picked out some red heels. Yes, you can also separate this phrasal verb. Pick out means select. You need to select something from a group. There are ten choices on this page, and I picked out three. After I received my package, I tried on the clothes. I tried on the blue shirt. I tried the blue shirt on. I tried on the white jeans. I tried the white jeans on. I tried on the red heels. I tried the red heels on. When we try on clothes or shoes, we put them on to see if we like them. Maybe they are nice. Maybe they are not. If you are in a store, you need to go to a changing room to try on clothes. Hmm. I love the white jeans. I'm going to keep them. Nah. <coughs> the blue shirt is a bit big. I'm going to return it. The red heels. Oh, I like them, but they are a bit uncomfortable. I need to wear in the heels. I need to wear the heels in. Wear in means to wear a new piece of clothing or new shoes to make them comfortable. If I wear these shoes for a couple of days, they will be comfortable. So I need to wear them in. We have buttons like. Like this, we have a zipper. I buttoned up my shirt. I buttoned my shirt up. Please zip up your pants. Zip your pants up. Okay, we use button up and zip up to mean close your clothes. We can also use do up. Do up can be for anything, even shoes. Please do up your shoes before you trip. Please do your shoes up before you trip. Hmm. Do you know when we really need to button up and zip up and do our clothes? In winter, it gets cold in winter. In fact, we need to bundle up. In the winter, it gets really cold, so you need to bundle up, like me. I have on my gloves, my scarf, my hat. I am bundled up. When it's cold out, I bundle up my kids. I bundle my kids up. I think everyone has their favorite piece of clothing, right? This、um, is one of my favorite sweaters. I got this when I was eight years old. I'm not making this up. And no, I was not a really big eight-year-old. I just wanted a big size. Okay. <laughs> um, you can see it's a little bit old-looking. It's an old, old sweater. Um, what happens if you wear something every day for a long time? Like shoes or clothes, they start to fall apart. My shoes are falling apart. You can say this house is falling apart. Fall apart definition: something is so old it cannot stay together anymore. It just falls apart. Right. Let's keep going. This is my driveway. I have to be careful pulling out of my driveway 
because there are a lot of cats in my neighborhood. I obviously don't want to run over a cat. Pull out of, run over. If a car, bus, or train pulls out of a place, they leave that place. A car can pull out of a driveway. A car can pull out of a parking space. A train can pull out of a train station. What's the opposite? Pull into. A car can pull into a driveway. A car can pull into a parking space. A train can pull into a train station. And if you run over something, we don't mean run. We mean you accidentally go over something with your car, bike, or maybe a truck. I obviously don't want to run over a cat. I accidentally ran over my neighbor's roses. I'm probably going to have to pay for the damage. Oh, let's talk money. Part four, money phrasal verbs. Let's start with the first one, put down. You know what? Let's start big. Let's start expensive. Here's a house and here's a car. The house costs $200,000 and the car costs $15,000. I want to buy the house. I want to buy the car. But I don't have $200,000. I don't have $15,000. But I can, I can put down a $10,000 deposit on the house. I can put down a $3,000 deposit on the car. Put down means to pay a part of the total, and you will continue to pay the rest over time. We normally use put down with the word deposit. That's very natural. We put down money, we put down a deposit on something big, like a house or a car, something you can't pay for now. I put down a $3,000 deposit, I put a $3,000 deposit down, both are fine. Finally, finally, I finally paid off my house. It took me about 15 years. It took me 12 months to pay off my car. Pay off means to finally complete a payment. Now the house is 100% mine. No more payments. The car is 100% mine. I don't need to pay anything else. I am still paying off my student loan. I am still paying my student loan off. Both are fine. Remember how about a minute ago I said, I can't put down a $10,000 deposit on the house. I actually wasn't being very honest. To be honest, I didn't even have $10,000. I couldn't put down a $10,000 deposit. My parents chipped in. To chip in means Different people, they want to help you buy something, so they all pay a little part. Eric works in an office. Next Friday is his birthday. Everyone in the office knows that he needs a new bike. So everyone chipped in to buy him a new bike. Carl chipped in. Amy chipped in. Sakwat chipped in. Isabella chipped in. Everyone chipped in and bought him a bike. Have you ever chipped in to buy someone a present? Let me know in the comments. So Eric is very lucky. He has some great colleagues. They all chipped in to buy him a bike. No one ever bought me a bike. Let's get back to my house. 
So my parents chipped in so I could put down a deposit to buy a house. I promised that I would pay them back. When you pay someone back, you return the money they gave you. Normally, when we use the phrasal verb pay back, we put the person in the middle. When are you going to pay me back? She said she wouldn't pay us back. I'll pay you back tomorrow. Of course, you could put the object after the phrasal verb. I promised that I would pay back my parents. That's also okay. Let's keep going. Okay, I have two bank accounts. I have a checking account and I have a savings account. The money in my checking account can be used every day. I can pay my rent, I can pay for my groceries, coffees, normal things. The money in my savings account is not for spending. It's for saving. Saving for something important like a hospital bill or, or a vacation. When we add money to our savings account, we are saving up. We use save up when we save money for something specific, something we want or need. I'm saving up for a new washing machine. I'm saving up to buy a new washing machine. Save up for plus noun. Save up to plus verb. <sighs> Unfortunately, this month was very expensive. I already paid my rent. I already paid my bills. I already paid for everything. But my laptop broke. My laptop broke and I had to buy a new one. I had to dip into my savings. First, what is the verb dip? We see it here, dip. It's such a small word. It's kind of cute, dip. Dip, dip, dip. Dip means to make a small movement into something. For example, you can dip a cookie in milk. You can dip your toe in a bath to see if the water is hot. Dip into means we need to use money from our savings account, but we don't really want to. Nobody wants to dip into their savings, but sometimes it's necessary. My husband and I had to dip into our emergency fund because a storm damaged part of our roof. I have an important question for you. What's your favorite animal? I know what you're thinking. You're thinking about a squirrel. Squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Okay, money phrasal verbs, squirrels, what? What do squirrels do? They collect things, right? They collect things. They collect things and they save them. So the phrasal verb is squirrel away. Squirrel away and save up can be synonymous. For example, I'm saving up for a vacation or I'm squirreling money away for a vacation. But when we use squirrel away, sometimes we mean we put money in a secret place. We're kind of hiding money. We're squirreling money away. I didn't know my ex-husband was squirreling money away in a Swiss bank account. You can squirrel money away or squirrel away money. Both are fine. There's been a lot of information so far. I think we need a break. Let's grab a coffee. Come on. Hi, could I have a decaf cappuccino to go, please? That'll be seven fifty, please. Seven dollars fifty for a cappuccino. That's expensive. <laughs> That's a little bit too expensive. That's a ripoff. 
That's a ripoff. Yes, here I'm using ripoff as a noun. Don't worry, I will get to the phrasal verb. A ripoff is something that is too expensive for the quality or the service. Sellers might try to rip off tourists. Sellers might try to rip tourists off. Here, I'm telling you that sellers might, might make tourists pay more than necessary. Maybe rip them off. Does rip off mean expensive? Not quite. You know, if you go to an amazing restaurant and the food is great, this could be expensive, but it was good food, great service, it was worth it. That's not a ripoff. So, what happens if you need to pay for something, but you don't want to? I joined a yoga class. I paid for 10 classes. When I arrived for my first class, the yoga teacher told me I needed to buy a yoga mat. You need to buy a mat. What? I had to buy my own mat? I thought the teacher would provide the mats. I had to cough up 40 bucks. Bucks is an informal way to say dollars. The word cough is this. <coughs> <coughs> so when we cough up money, we need to pay for something, but we really don't want to. Kind of like coughing, we don't really want to cough. And listen to the pronunciation. We say cough. Cough. I'm sure you have probably had to cough up money at some point in your life. Okay, good. Here we have a picture of this amazing food. I would love to go to a restaurant, but at the moment I'm just scraping by. I'm gonna put scrape by down there. I'll put rich at the top and poor at the bottom. So you can see, if you're scraping by, you're not poor, but you only have money for the basics. You can pay your rent, you can pay for food, maybe you can pay for your bus tickets. But there's this kind of negative feeling to it. You barely have enough. I work two different jobs just so I can scrape by. When I was a university student, I usually managed to scrape by but sometimes my parents had to give me money. Get by. You can see get by and scrape by are very similar, but get by doesn't have that desperation to it. It's a little bit more neutral. I live in New York and yes, it's expensive, but I'm getting by. Don't worry about me. I'm getting by. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm rich. I'm rich now. My great aunt Ellen just died and she she left me half a million dollars. I can quit my job. I can quit my job because I have come into money. When you come into money, it means someone has died probably a relative, and they left you some money. When I was 25, I came into some money. My friends are really impressed that I own a house, but it was really easy for me to buy. So if you do come into money, don't squander it away. Squander away, definition, to waste. This phrasal verb is usually used to speak about money, but it can also be used for other things like talent or potential. Vin slowly squandered away his life savings on gambling, booze, and drugs. It's such a shame that Tina squandered her talent away. She was so worried about failure that she stopped competing. We're done! Wow, there's been a lot of information in today's lesson. Challenge yourself. 
write two example sentences every day using today's phrasal verbs. I hope this lesson helped you and I can't wait to make another video for you. Thank you, bye!